Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming today. We would like to begin the program with a welcome from our host, Reverend Edwin Sanders, the senior servant and founder of this Metropolitan Interdenominational Church. Good morning. We really appreciate you being here today. This is uh, the Metropolitan International Church campus. This is the Metropolitan Meeting House that is to the, to the east of you here. Uh, we came and established this place of worship uh, 31 years ago. Uh, at that point, this was uh, Univista Park. It was a 25-acre park, and we were very intentional about building next to it because we wanted to have all the beauty of nature. And truly today, we have all the evidence of nature around us. Uh, I always have to draw attention to the evidence of the presence of creation in our midst. For indeed, on a day like today, even when the sun is as bright as it is, there's still a cloud or two in the sky. There's a cool breeze that still touches our brow. There's grass that grows. There are flowers that bloom. There are butterflies that float by. There are birds in the sky. All of that is a great evidence of the fact that this is a space and a place where the evidence of creation is all around us. But more than anything else, you are here. And that's the greatest evidence of creation that we have all around us. It's a significant day for us in a lot of ways. This is Metropolitan Interdenominational Church. Uh, the name Metropolitan Interdenominational Church is a result of the fact that when we began 37 years ago, we were determined that we wanted to be the church of the city. And we believed then, which some people didn't fully believe, that this city was going to grow in this direction, especially towards Metro Center, as it was just in its infancy. And we're glad that our vision was correct, that we were here ahead of the curve. And we now that know that all you made it here now uh, to discover the beauty of this, part, this space. So let me uh, move forward just to uh, complete my, my welcome to you by telling you just a quick story. Uh, 20 years ago, on April the 16th, any of you that were around, remember that that is a day of, of, of remembrance for us here in Nashville because the great tornado, 150 mile an hour winds came through and devastated this city. That was an interesting experience for us because that same year in 1998, uh, we had a daughter who was turning 16 years old. Six months after the tornado, my daughter, for her 16th birthday, told her mother and I that she did not want a 16th birthday party, a sweet 16 party. She had already written off a lot of things we thought were going to be important to her, debutantes and everything else. She said, none of that for me. But she said, what I want to do is plant trees uh, all over this city and especially North Nashville, which really bore the brunt of the impact of the tornado in many ways in terms of the trees that were down. So for her 16th birthday, what we did was had a group of young women, young ladies, and a couple of their male friends who, who planted trees all over this city. Uh, we think that it's important because everything that represents common ground is important to us here at Metropolitan Church. We're a radically inclusive congregation, but one of the ways in which we maintain that spirit of inclusivity is to always point to that which represents the common ground for all of us. So you're standing on holy ground, you're standing on, on common ground, and you're standing here today to be a part of this moment, which I think is a profound significance in terms of a vision for the way in which we would like to see things go forward in this community, such that there's always an ecological-minded way of thinking that's a part of who we are. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I am going to yield this space right now to our mayor, and uh, I think you ought to welcome him with a round of applause. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, Reverend Sanders, just for uh, that uh, introduction and for everything you've done here in Nashville in the past decades, and we expect uh, will continue as years go by. Uh, I do want to acknowledge uh, Council Lady Berkeley Allen, who has joined us here today, as well as Council Lady Angie Henderson. I saw as well. As well, um, they're both here today. Uh, their commitment to the city is, is well known, and I think it's especially true in the context of the environment and trees in particular. Trees are an essential part of this city. Uh, they are great for our communities in terms of providing shade and, and working to prevent stormwater runoff, keeping it cooler, uh, 
And so we know they're important to the city generally. They're also important to me uh, individually, and I, I'll give you one example of, uh, of that. My wife is from uh, the East Bay in Northern California. And it would be nice for me to believe that my charm and wit and uh, good looks are what brought her here to Nashville. But I'm, I'm pretty much convinced that the first time we came and she saw how green it is compared to the East Bay where she had grown up was probably the deciding factor. So uh, I guess I have trees to thank for my wife's relocating from California to Nashville. Um, as we grow, however, we have a challenge in this community to make sure that we don't lose that special sense of greenness that we have here in Nashville. Uh, and that is particularly true as it relates to our trees. Now, Mayor Dean had uh, brought together a group of people, um, I guess, more than 10 years ago now, to look at uh, what we could do to pr uh, protect uh, our community and make it more sustainable. Mayor Barry started that process again just a few years ago, and I had the opportunity to work through that. And Mikhail, who will speak after me, we worked hard to identify things that we could do to make Nashville a greener, more sustainable place. Uh, one of the most uh, glaring uh, opportunities that we had in Nashville was to focus on trees, because if you look back between 2008 and 2016, it looks like we were losing about um, 9,000 trees a year during that time frame. And uh, it resulted in about a 15% loss of canopy in the core of the city, which was making us uh, uh, falling. We were starting to fall below our compar competitor cities in that regard during that time frame. So to help stem that loss of trees, the, uh, the community came together and identified a very ambitious goal of planting a half a million trees by 2050. And uh, it is a bold and ambitious goal. But Metro is committed to doing its part to meet this need by investing $2 million a year for tree care and planning. Uh, but that's really just the tip of the iceberg, frankly. That's why uh, we're pleased to announce uh, the Nashville Root Project. And that is because um, it is going to bring together not just government, uh, not just the public sector, but the private sector to meet this goal. We know that by 2050, with the help of uh, organizations like the Cumberland River Compact, uh, we will um, work with Metro Water Services to reach this goal. So I want to thank Mikhail first for, for Cumberland River Compact's commitment to making this happen in Nashville. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Senator Bill Frist, who will speak after me, for his uh, his commitment to what is most important in Nashville, to making it a healthier place for us all. And uh, he and I have gotten to work a lot together over the last six months, and uh, I am deeply impressed and thankful for his commitment to, um, to the city of, of Nashville. Um, and he will chair Root Nashville's uh, board to make sure that we don't mess up in the coming years. Uh, the Nature Conservancy of Tennessee, the Nashville Tree Foundation, Hands on Nashville, and ULI, the Urban Land Institute of Nashville, have also been great partners in this regard. Scott Potter at the Water Department is a forward-thinking person in this regard, and they have, uh, a, they have a very direct interest in terms of getting trees planted to protect our community as it relates to stormwater. Mary Beth Eichert is here as well from the Mayor's Office. I want to thank her for her work on this, and if, let's give her a round of applause. I say this every time I get to the Brown family, but uh, um, I went to uh, Martin Brown Sr. is about to speak uh, in just a few minutes, and uh, his son, Martin Brown Jr., and I were high school classmates. And I first learned about uh, chickens from, from Martin, who was probably one of the, one of the uh, early adopters of chicken farming in, uh, on Hillsborough Road. And so Martin and I go back a long time. Uh, the, the Brown family have been, uh, have been quiet leaders in our community for a very long time. And uh, I'm glad that they are, uh, have stepped up, uh, in particular when it comes to Root Nashville, to lead us financially um, in that regard. They have made a commitment for the first three years uh, that is so significant that every other penny raised during that time frame will go towards the planting of a tree. There will be no 
no money spent on anything but planting a tree. Um, and so the Brown family, especially Martin Brown Sr., who is here today, I want to say thank you to you on behalf of the city of Nashville. Nissan North America is, uh, has stepped up early and made a multi-year commitment to actually making sure we get trees planted in Nashville. So I want to say thank you as well to Nissan North America, which you, I think is represented here today as well. So thank you to Nissan. So, uh, go off script. I'm going to go off script. Sorry, Mary Beth. So in this, and I, I, I won't drag it out either because it's hot. Uh, um, so Nashville is in a moment of unprecedented prosperity. Uh, it, I think by any, any measure whatsoever. But it is not being shared equally uh, 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 around our community. We have certain folks in town who are just not uh, benefiting as much as, as the average person. And uh, that is something we work on every day in the mayor's office. We are trying to stay focused on that because it is a, a challenge to the overall Nashville enterprise, I think. Um, and I know it may, it may seem weird, but this is of particular interest when it comes to equity. Because uh, if, you, if you look around the places that have lost tree cover in the last 10 years or so, they are predominantly areas of high uh, poverty. And they are areas where we have high um, concentrations of African Americans in our town. So um, that's why as part of uh, Route Natural, we have decided to focus initially on those areas of town as we go out and plant trees for this community. So uh, there is really, there is so much, um, uh, uh, so much we can do in terms of equity. And this is just one small part, but it is an important part. And I know that Council Lady uh, Sharon Hurt is gonna mention that in a few minutes when she speaks as well. One final thing I'll say about the, the overall campaign is, you know, Nashville is another, another issue that we're focusing on when it comes to equity is Opportunity Now. It's a program every summer where we get uh, young people ages 14 to 24 engaged, get them a paid internship during the summer. And uh, this is a perfect opportunity for us to do that during the summer. And so you'll see uh, Opportunity Now, young, young people out working, learning about, uh, about trees, about planting them, about the importance and uh, if I have my way and if we can raise the money, we're going to expand that program to a year-long program so that it's not just, just during the summer, so we get young people working on this year-round. So uh, I've, I'm thinking back in my life to 20 years ago, April 16th. I was living in East Nashville, and, uh, and at 1810 Fatherland, we, had, we lost many trees where I was living. And I drive by there every once in a while and see the tulip poplar that we planted back then. And um, it's a, planting a tree is, it's not just about a moment, right? It's about, it's about a long-term commitment to, um, to the community. It's about thinking about where we're gonna be in 10 and 20 and 30 and 50 years. And Nashville is an important place because I think we are capable here of bringing people together to make those kind of long-term investments, thinking about where we're gonna be in 10 and 20 and 30 years. Uh, Senator Frist, the Brown family, uh, Cumberland River Compact, I wanna thank you all for your leadership and commitment in this regard. Nissan, thank you for stepping up early on. We greatly appreciate it. And um, Reverend Sanders, uh, it's no surprise to me that we would be today here at your church making this announcement because of your long time commitment to this community as well. So I'm, I'm glad we're starting kicking off today. And with that, I think I'll turn it over to Mikhail. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Briley. Uh, it's important to acknowledge today one family in particular who has committed a tremendous amount towards convening us here. Martin Brown and his family have dedicated millions of dollars and countless hours toward improving environmental health and social justice in Nashville for decades. Please join me in giving Martin Brown a very warm welcome. Uh, 
if I forget to say something or say something wrong, I hope somebody will correct me. I've got some notes, but I'm not going to look at them. Um, Betty and I moved to Nashville in 1965. Uh, we've seen Nashville grow. We've seen a lot of changes, but we just loved it when we got here. We both came from Louisville, Kentucky, but we didn't live in Louisville. We lived about 15 miles away. And bear in mind, this was in the 40s, <coughs> uh, World War II time. And we loved trees. You know, we, we played in the woods. We played in the creeks. We played in the haylofts. We knew the, the trees were where the, uh, the polyphemus moth hung its cocoon. And we saw lots of those kinds of things. We knew the squirrels went in the trees. We knew the robins made uh, nests in the trees with kind of grass and mud. We knew all those kind of things. Trees were very, very important. And uh, when we moved to Nashville, we brought that love of trees with us. Uh, Betty uh, met up with Victor Johnson, and Victor Johnson said, we need to do something about trees. Betty, uh, I'll give you the first gift if you will pull a group together. They pulled a group together, the Nashville Tree Foundation, and it did some things like try to educate people about the value of trees. It tried to... Uh, uh, you know, recognize uh, big trees. Uh, they had the high tree party and so forth. But all of that went on on a very low budget, uh, easy uh, scale and so forth like that until the tornado. And the tornado changed everything. You could call it a crisis or you could call it an opportunity. And uh, some people said, we ought to do something about this. We've got to plant some trees. What are we going to do? And uh, some other people said, well, who's going to do this? Well, we've got a tree foundation. Why doesn't the tree foundation do it? This was way, way bigger than the tree foundation was ready to handle. But so the community came together in an unbelievable way. And uh, uh, I helped them raise a little money. I have knocked on some doors and so forth. But it was just like shooting fish in a barrel. The community came in. We well, were shooting to raise a million dollars to plant a lot of trees. We didn't quite get there. I think it was 930000 or something. But it was all done in a matter of a few weeks. And that was Nashville coming together. So I knew that Nashville was the greatest place to live in the whole world because we make things happen. Uh, now we've got another challenge. We're talking about Nashville growing. It is growing. It's going to keep growing. And uh, we're going to lose some trees, whether it's the emerald ash borer or some trees get cut down in the natural form of growth. Uh, we're, we just have to recognize that, but we need to plant trees. Well, I believe that the Nashville community will come together. We're blessed with some very generous people uh, who love the city and want things to happen. I don't think we're going to have many enemies on this fundraising deal. I think we're going to have a lot of friends, uh, but we, we all need to do it. It's not, oh, Bloomberg has helped us unbelievably. They have given their time. They brought a great team. Adam Freed, uh, Jake, Bridget, all, all that have done. They have organized us. They've branded it. They've got to uh, help work with the city to organize the structure. They've got uh, uh, Cumberland River Compact to agree that they're going to head it. Pulled together an advisory group. Got Dr. Friss to watch out for the whole thing and so forth like that. So, so all, all of that is is taking place. Bloomberg, uh, we owe you a great debt of thanks. You all have really helped us. And, uh, uh, now, uh, I'm supposed to say something else, but I've semi-forgotten what it is. But I think I'll I'll pull it uh, together. We all need to help. We need us to do what we can. Some people can give some money. Maybe some people can't or can give a small gift, but we need to talk it up, try to make friends, make sure people know what we're doing and, and so forth. And uh, along those lines, I thought about something uh, that I can do, and I've got it in my pocket here. And I'm going to give it to Mikhail. Uh, I've got nine grandchildren, and they say you plant a tree not for yourself, you plant it for your grandchildren. So I've got uh, nine times the amount it costs and I hope you will plant those. I'm not on our farm, but I want them in, in public spaces or where it's needed, a school, a, a church, a park, or whatever. So, so that, that's what I'm doing. Oh.
Thank you all very much. Thank you, Martin. Nashville's own former Senate Majority Leader and public health advocate needs no introduction. Please join me in welcoming Root Nashville's Advisory Board Chair, Senator Bill Friss. Uh, Mr. Mayor and, and Martin, thank you for your, your comments, your leadership, your inspiration for, for us all. Um, I'm here uh, today for, for really the, almost the very same reason Martin is. As a, a native Nashvilleian, as a, a doctor who does focus on the impact of the environment on our, our health, and then as a, a former United States Senator who represented uh, all of you, all of Nashville and all of Tennessee and the United States Capitol, I do care very deeply, along with all of you, about health and well-being of, of our community. It really boils down to, to the fact that trees and green space are a vital, vital component of a healthy community. They are fundamental. Studies have repeatedly shown how proximity to, to, to green space and to trees reduces stress, stress and reduces chronic conditions like diabetes and like stress and like cardiovascular disease. And tree-lined spaces and streets and parks promote physical activity for people to get out and breathe that fresh air and to exercise and to improve mental health and to improve social working together and social cohesion. A robust tree canopy, we know, allows citizens to breathe easier. And it does it in a, a whole bunch of ways, by producing oxygen from the trees themselves, by absorbing carbon dioxide from all of the combustion and the fuel combustion in the neighborhoods. And for the actual removal that the trees and, and the foliage does and trapping of particles that are actually in the air. And the bottom line of all of that is that trees make us healthier. They make us breathe easier. And thus things like asthma, which plagues all parts of Nashville and all parts of the state, we can address a little bit more readily by planting trees. And we feel it all now uh, a little bit, and after our, our record breaking heat all of summer, we really uh, appreciate it. Trees come back and actually reduce temperatures by about 1 to 4 percent, thus lowering cooling costs by as much as $50. That cooling impact we all appreciate. And studies have shown that urban areas with tree canopies have lower rates of crime. Simply put, more trees mean healthier and a safer city. As a doctor and as a lung surgeon and a cardiac surgeon, I've seen sort of firsthand the impact that environment can have on health. I remember when, when as a little boy, I'd go on rounds with Dad into the hospital, and he'd point over to a window, and outside the window there would be trees. And he said, he said Billy, at the time it was Billy, he said, just look out that window. When patients can actually look through that window and see green space and see trees, they actually have better health outcomes. They get out of the intensive care unit earlier. They go home to their families earlier. And that is just, it's imprinted, it's embedded in my mind because that's really what we celebrate today, the impact that trees have for themselves and for nature, but also our health and, and well-being. I've also had, as the, as the mayor uh, does so well, seen how collaboratively people coming together, citizens, with projects that are owned by the communities like, like this one, the real power and the positive impact that they have on our uh, community. It goes back to when we first established Nashville Health, that we put together citizens mainly and communities and government and businesses all in the same room to address those health challenges, that burden of, of, of disease in our communities. And we've seen that collaborative impact. We're seeing a measurable increase an improvement in the health and well-being of Nashvilleians by coming together in a collective sense. And that's what this campaign is all about. The diversity of organizations that Martin mentioned, the many other organizations that are stepping up and participating both with their funds and with their activities, that coll collective impact will go a long, long way in improving the health and safety of our community. 
Now, I was sitting there thinking, what happened 20 years ago for me after, after both Martin and, and Reverend Sanders have mentioned that? And I'll go two years longer. It was 22 years ago that as a United States senator, one of the early things that I did, I said I wanted to plant the tulip poplar. And I know that was sort of one of Betty's favorite trees, maybe most favorite tree, that to plant that Tennessee state tree on the grounds of the United States Capitol. And I did exactly what Martin exemplified. I took my three boys. At that time, they were about that big and that big and that big. And we went out and with great celebration among ourselves and personal pride, planted that tulip poplar, which is on the Capitol grounds uh, today, a little bit of Tennessee in Washington, D.C. I know this campaign in closing will inspire Nashville, Nashvilleians to all participate in a collective way as individuals, as families that will have a lasting impact on the health of our community. Root Nashville will not only have just that positive impact on Nashville, but by doing this in a way that, that Adam and Bloomberg has, has really led and the Nature Conservancy has led, we'll do it in a scientific way, a data-driven way, so that communities all across America can learn from our philanthropy, from the scale that we can go to, from the impact that we can have, and the impact of all that on the health and safety of our community. We will make Nashville and continue to make Nashville a thriving urban center with tree-lined streets, with green spaces, with little pocket parks with greenery that will keep our city healthy for generations to come. So let's all join together to help our city take root. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Frist. That's a beautiful vision. Our next speaker is Councilwoman Hurt. She's been serving her fellow Nashvillians for nearly 20 years. And as president of JUMP, she works to connect and enliven the small business community here in Nashville. Please join me in welcoming Councilwoman Hurt. Good morning. For this campaign to succeed, it needs to be rooted in our communities. This campaign to engage all Nashvilleans is a must. It will mean something in each area, but I'm so excited for what it is doing for North Nashville to become a selected impact area. Jefferson Street is primed to become the most successful commercial corridor in Nashville. And to make this vision come to fruition, we need people walking. These trees will beautify and cool our streets. Streets with trees are better for business, period. North Nashville has the highest rate of heart disease. We all need to be walking in an environment where it's healthy, to breathe and protect it from the sun. Him, him. <laughs> it has the potential to enliven North Nashville, to get our hands dirty, caring for our community, and bring together neighbors under the shade of our trees. At the core of this campaign is the mission to improve the public health of our most vulnerable residents and to revive and protect our environment. If I may, Mayor, take a personal and councilmatic privilege as an alumnus of the Environmental Protection Agency's Environmental Justice Academy, I know it is vital to not only plant, but to protect and preserve trees. That's why I'm so happy I'm here and able to let you all know. Before there was Black Lives Matter or any Lives Matters, there was Earth Matters. And Sis Way Heron has been working in this community for decades to make it a better place, a better green place. So all of the philanthropy that our senator has talked about that has gone on for this. I hope that it will provide some green jobs for people in this community, that it will help 
Sin's way and earth matters as they start off training for preserving trees in January over at our Knowles Bordeaux Center. So I am just so thankful to be here. Thankful that you all have come to invest and to engage in this North Nashville community where it really does matter. Thank you so much. I was sitting here a moment ago, and there are two things I want to say to you. The first of which is I'm sure there's at least a moment in all of your minds since we've been here thinking that the amplification wasn't all you wish it was, and probably that you just didn't feel like you captured some of it because of that. But I couldn't help but sit here and think that I don't know how many of you are fans of classical music. But if you know Dvorak's New World Symphony, he wrote that symphony in New York City in the midst of all the noise of the building that was going on. All of the jackhammering, all of the riveting, and all of the stuff that was a part of that particular moment in the history of that city. And because of that, when you listen to the symphony, you realize that there's a moment when it feels almost chaotic in terms of the sounds that he wove into it. But when you get to the end of the symphony, there's a part that's called the Largo. And when they come to the Largo, there's a way in which it has a mellow, soothing, comforting kind of sound to it. I think that we're in the midst of a time in this city when there's an awful lot of jackhammering, an awful lot of riveting, and an awful lot of noise going on all around. But what I pray will happen is that in due season, the things that we have talked about today in terms of common ground, the things that we've talked about today in terms of restoration and preservation of community, the things that we've talked about today as suggesting how it is that we might be a place and a place where indeed everyone will have the same sense of ownership in it. There's a way in which perhaps if this is a thread that will help weave that together, that we will have found ourselves today being a part of a moment that I think perhaps has some profound significance. I was going to take a moment and make sure I introduce Sidsway, so I thank you very much for bringing up Sidsway as a member of Metropolitan Church, and we call him the Jolly Green Giant of Nashville, amen. Uh, he has a great, uh, he keeps everything going around here in that way. We thank God for him, but there are many others. Uh, I want all the members of Metropolitan Church who are here, just wave your hand, amen. They're around you, behind you, and all around. Like I said, we are a radically inclusive congregation. Uh, there's one person, though, I have to have particular for you to recognize, and that's the lady with the orange on over there, who's my better three quarters. Amen. And I always say it's really interesting because Bill and I always appreciate the fact that Bill and I work together on the boards and all kinds of stuff all the time. But it was Billy who introduced us. So uh, Billy introduced me to Bill, and uh, the byproduct has been the things that we've been able to do together. So... In closing, there's one other thing that you need to know. 37 years ago, when this congregation was birthed, one of the visions that we had was that in the spirit of what I had observed in New York City, where I moved here from 46 years ago, was that as so much that was happening in terms of gentrification and change in that city, especially in Harlem, a community that I was very close to, is that there were some people who were smart enough to create these green spaces where they would tear down buildings and there was also the same phenomenon of displacement and all that that we're dealing with here. But one thing that did help in terms of making those communities places that did end up being places of harmony and wholeness and oneness and unity and togetherness was that they took some spaces in between those brownstones and put little parks. Little parks that were not much wider than these two tents together but they referred to them as being inner city sanctuaries. One of the things that we envisioned doing in Nashville 37 years ago was creating inner city sanctuaries. When we first came here to this 25 acres that surrounds us, it was all green space. And that's one reason why we wanted to build here. Little did we know 
we would get the development of the schools, Hall Jackson School and the John Early School, and other developments that are obviously all around us. But now I think that vision is more important than ever. So one of the things that this tree that we're getting ready to acknowledge as the first tree that's being planted in this initiative that I understand is going to be a half a million trees, all right? So the first tree in this initiative, and all that you've heard here today that it represents, we want you to know that the first of the inner city sanctuaries that's going to happen in Nashville, Tennessee, which we thought of 37 years ago, is going to be a part of what's on the land right here that we own, that people come knocking on our door every day trying to buy and develop housing and everything else on. But at least a part of that is going to be the first inner city sanctuary, a place where there'll be words like my father used to have on his door to his office, where he just simply said, come in and rest and pray. We want it to be a place where everybody in this city can know you can come and sit and meditate and reflect and project and have those moments of enlightenment and those moments of envisioning and those moments of transformative possibilities that we've talked about here today. That doesn't happen unless you have spaces that are designated for it. So that's going to be a part of it. And, uh, well, Mikhail, I'm probably going to talk to you about that check that Mr. Brown gave you. Uh, it, it might help. <laughs> it might help Sizway to help us to figure out how to turn that into, so we think we can get other churches and other institutions and other businesses to buy into it. So this will be the first of the inner city sanctuaries as well, and it'll grow from there. You can never ask a preacher to talk and not hear something that tells you what you need to do in order to make the vision real. That's what it takes. You've heard it today from the mayor, from the senator. You've heard it from our councilwoman at large. You've heard it from the visionaries who have come up with this event. But it's about doing something about it. And it's a lot of noise going on in Nashville around us. But I think there's also the importance of understanding that it's time for a spirit of peace and harmony and well-being to be birthed here in a way that allows us not to become like the city. And I think some of you all know this. You know that one of the labels that they have for Atlanta is they call it the largest city in the woods in the world. That's one of their little trademarks. Well, clearly, you, Nashville is not going to be the largest, but I think Nashville can do it in a way where there will be a lot of things that will represent a degree of civility, a way of inclusiveness and community that perhaps Atlanta has not been able to achieve in the same way. So you're here today. Make sure you're here tomorrow and all tomorrow's tomorrows as we go about making this vision a reality for all of us. God bless you. God keep you. And that God is the God that any of you all might know by any name that you know God, whether you call God Buddha, whether you call God Yahweh, whether you call, you know, God way Jesus, whether you call God way Allah, there's one God, and that's the God of all creation. And I think when you talk about trees, that's common ground. That's inescapable and unavoidable, and all of us ought to be able to appreciate that. So go in peace, and we pray that the peace of God will go with you. Amen. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.